you gotta throw every hand, you gotta you, you gotta throw. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? You got it. Okay? Boom. Look out, Danny Romero's the next percentage by copy box right numbers. He's rising through the course of the fight. All the way, all the way. Round four all. Hunt and Freddy. 1%, 36%, 32, 39, 44% connect percentage in that last round. And that's a function of what George talked about. Romero getting closer to tapping. Hunt and Freddy. But side to side, huh? Side to side, side to side. Outside, but you got to smart fight machine, just get outside. Yes, yeah, sir. Ray. Take it easy. Yeah, and in and out, in and out. Use the jab. Combinations, combinations. For all the build up, the long wait, the passions involved, the rivalry, what we have here is a spirited, high class boxing match. It's going to come down to the four championship rounds. 9, 10, 11, and 12 upcoming. So now we're going to give him the uh, go-ahead now to start putting together more, a lot of punches, which means he's going to have to step forward and not worry about the counter punches. And it's effective. Romero lands the left hook. Happy gets a left hook into the body. Good left hook by Romero. That's right, come on, keep his hands up. Happy is corner asking him to jab, and still he doesn't reward them for that. Not jabbing nearly as much as he did in the first few rounds, and he had the initiative in the fight. No, that Romero never stops. He doesn't be still. Whenever he's still, Tapia makes him pay. So as long as he's moving around, he's in, he's in safe. You gotta start out tending to doubt a guy who's been trained his whole life by a police athletic league volunteer trainer. But Danny Romero has it all. Now here comes Tapia. The one time that Danny Romero decided to stop and stand still, he started to pay for it. Tapia came alive and brought the crowd with it. Good right hand by Tapia. He's been in punch in several rounds. No matter what he does, Romero is right back into his face, up and down. Tremendous discipline shown here by Danny Romero. It didn't go well for him in the early rounds, but he stuck to the task and began to chip away and find his opportunities. With open hand right and counter right. Doesn't look like there's truly any bad blood with those guys. No, nope. it, it looks now as though, as though they respect each other enormously and are fighting a tactical boxing match. That's right. What Romero is starting to do now is making Tapia get his feet crossed together. Johnny showed his sportsmanship there. Had a chance to load tap Romero over when Danny was in an awkward position, and he held his punches back because he knew it would be unfair. We go to the closing rounds. Johnny Tapia has a vast edge in experience. He's been this deeply into a prize fight many more times in his career than has the younger Danny Romero. That's the way to work. Look like a world champion. Start touching him the same way. Just play with him. Play with him. What happens when you stay in here? Come on, come on. Why do we come to my picture? I love you, Albert. Big bear, I say hi. Speaking of busted noses, Tapia estimates that he's had 15 or 20 of them. Three rounds to go in the Battle of Albuquerque. And it's either man's fight, or at least you have to suspect that's the case, as they go to the
the championship rounds. Now Tapia is able to use his footwork. Moving out of the way. And establishing that step left jab again. Harold, you've got it 87-84 for Johnny Tapia. Jim, I thought he had two good rounds at 890 bucks. Beautifully. Getting off first. He had Romero bleeding. He was landing, you know, the good solid punches. And he kept Romero off balance. And Romero was missing a lot. I thought Johnny Tapia surged into the lead in rounds 8 and 9. I think it's either man's fight going down the stretch, George, don't you? Yeah, Romero started to pull away, and then all of a sudden Tapia got a second win, and he started giving advice like, you're looking good. Play with him. This is what you want to tell a professional fighter. You want to give him too much advice. And once that corner starts clicking like that, and you got a stiff jab, you can do anything you want. Fascinating in the unpredictable life of Johnny Tapia. Three weeks ago, he fired Jesse Reed. Tonight, Reed is the primary voice in his corner. Right hand landed for Romero. Well, uh, Another head butt. In that corner. In that corner. In that corner. Both fighters hurting from this butt. Oh, no blood, apparently. That's accidental also, okay? No cuts, all right? You're okay? No blood. You okay? No blood on Romero. Come on. No blood visible on Tapia. Remember, Tapia don't hit, don't hit, come on. was told by his corner to give him the green light to play with him. So he's doing as much. Great right hand by Tapia as Romero charges in. Tapia commanding the space in the ring and lands another right hand over the top. Romero chasing back without effect. Romero going back to the jab. To regain his command over the space in the ring. Now Romero is trying to reach with that overhand right. He's not thinking about where he's going. He's not watching it. He's just throwing it. Early on, he was calculating and he had it all measured. Romero just missed with the long right hand. Happy at showing you he's got his energy left. Both fighters tremendously conditioned with great stamina so far. There you saw them, their heads collide, tough hombres, neither one came out with a cut. Think about those headbutts, they hurt a lot more than a punch. The sting and sting and sting. Ouch. Throw them down the middle, you're starting to open up too much. Okay. Throw them down the middle, huh? It's straight right hand there, folks. Not around, huh? You gotta throw straight right hands at him when he's stepping in. We're getting too close. You're never gonna get too close. Right hand and drilling with that uppercut on the right yeah. side. I'm gonna get you. I'm your champion, Big Bear. Hi. Love you. Stay here. Deep breath. Johnny, have fun with it. Have fun with him, son. Have fun with it. A corner tell a fighter to have fun. Do you think he needs to clown with him, George? No, they're trying to tell him in his own words, relax. You're the man out there. We believe in you. So go out there and do what you do and have some fun with it. That's the best advice you can give an experienced fighter. Especially when you haven't been in training camp a long time with him. Especially a guy who genuinely loves to fight as Johnny Tapia does. You know what I find myself wondering, guys? All the people in Albuquerque have been building up to this for years investing their emotions in these two men and we have a fight that's a, a beautiful boxing match but i wonder if it will really satisfy them if it, it doesn't come to a final conclusion well it should because it's been a marvelous demonstration of the trained skills of the two fighters i'm not sure that everybody interested in this fight understands trained skills 
This has been a dynamite fight. It's been a terrific by T. Ross. Oh, man. Hard left hook to the body by Tapia. Crowd trying to lift their man. Danny Romero hanging in. Oh, that was your left hook. Kind of under like with. When you start getting close and not having to throw with energy, you got things in hand. Tapia clowning a little bit. Giving the crowd something to have fun with, too. Not only that, you're fighting a young boy. You got to do a lot of things in there <laughs> to make him think something. Romero has a round and a half. He may need to do something dramatic to pull this fight out, which means at least a knockdown. He doesn't look like he can get it. Don't count out the possibility of a Romero knockout late. He has twice in his career knocked out opponents in the 12th round. You don't see it all that often. Now, Tapia is starting to get his shoulders into the fight. Where not, not only he's he having to run away as before, he's just turning his shoulder slightly. Once a fight against that kind of leverage and that kind of confidence, it's hard to get him with a good shot. Jersey Joe Wildcat. Tapia leaving his hands down. Romero taking advantage to pop tabs into Tapia's face. Johnny clowning. Danny scoring. Step back. Easy, easy, Johnny. Easy. Watch those hands. Come on. Now Tapia lands a left hook and a straight right hand. And Romero comes back with a counter left. Blood from Romero's nose. heard Harold Letterman say that blood on Romero was one reason he gave round nine to Tapia. A lot of blood coming out of Romero's left nostril. Tapia trying to give Romero a hug as he went back to his corner at the end of round 11. Romero did his best to ignore him. Crowd loves it. Last round.
But despite all the clowning here in the 12th round, the whole course of the bout, I think you can make a strong argument that Johnny Tapia has fought the most disciplined, controlled, balletic 12 rounds of his career. Well, you remember, Jim, Earl, before the fight, I said he's a, he is an underrated boxer. He has boxing skills. But he tends to lose it during fights, and here he's maintained his poise and his control. 30 seconds left in the Battle of Albuquerque. All of New Mexico now rises to await the final decision. Boy, I wouldn't want to be a judge of this fight. Vicariously as 
the throws came, they were animated. They were very, very excited. In the third round, he got them very excited and puffed up about the action. In the seventh round, he got them very concerned. And by the twelfth round, they were confident that their fighter made them proud and that he was the one who was going to be victorious for this one. Again, the question will be asked, where were you when Johnny Tapia took care of Danny Romero? The people of Albuquerque will not forget. And we're glad you were there, Nicole. I'm sure you won't forget it yourself. And let's go to Larry Merchant now for a word with Johnny Tapia. Larry. Thank, thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Johnny. Congratulations, Johnny. You seem overcome. What does this mean to you? First of all, don't stop me. Jesus Christ, he gets his victory, but oh, I just, I've overcome everything, and uh, I give all the thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. What won the fight for you? Style, uh, different movements. I have a good team on my side. I just, I, I just listened to a game plan, and I did it. Have you ever fought such a disciplined fight from start to finish, and did you think you needed that to beat Romero? I just did a lot of good things today. I had power, strength, and error. I refused to go down. I refused to lose. And whatever he hit me with, it was not going to hurt me. I noticed after the fight, while you were hugging your wife, Teresa, that you took a look over there to Danny Romero's corner. What were you thinking? You know, everything's done and said, you know. Let bygones be bygones. Let me live my life. He lives his life. He's a great fighter. And uh, he's still a champion in my heart because he held his title for a while. Do you feel somehow purged of all of the hard feelings that have built up for so long? We made it bigger than ever. And uh, the best man won. And I kept it like that. You said before the fight that, 